In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Today's gospel story, dear brothers and sisters, addresses some vital topics. It talks about the virtue of love, the virtue of faith, and it talks about the forgiveness of sins. The virtue of love, as always demonstrated by our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the four friends of the paralytic man who brought him to Christ for healing. The virtue of faith is demonstrated by his friends and also by the paralytic himself. The same story in the Gospel of St. Luke, it says that when the friend's brother, paralytic friend, there was such a big crowd, they could not enter the house and they opened the roof and placed the paralytic friend before Jesus Christ. Most certainly, if the paralytic himself did not have faith, he would not agree to all of this. So the faith of those friends and his faith was absolutely remarkable. What was the first thing our Lord Jesus Christ <clears throat> told the paralytic man? Do not be afraid. Your sins are forgiven you. Be of good cheer. Don't we all like to hear these words lovely words of our Savior, your sins are forgiven you. Because we all suffer from the paralysis of sin and we all need a spiritual healing. Without sincere repentance, without sincere confession on our side, the spiritual healing cannot take place. As we all know, the original sin separated first man from God and it continues to separate us from God and from each other. Confession and sincere repentance is the only way for us to return back to God, to reunite with God, because union with God brings us salvation. And nothing can deprive us from salvation like sin. Every sin is the enemy of our salvation. And we must make constant efforts to get rid of our sins through the sacrament of repentance and confession. The Greek word Metania, repentance, means change. It is a change of heart in our souls and the news from the darkness of sin to the light of Christ. The beginning of this important spiritual journey in our life is the awareness of our sins. In our lives, we often see how our loving God in his great providence, in his great mercy and wisdom and love, lead us to awareness of our sins and to the repentance. There are countless ways used by God to bring us to this awareness. It could be some misfortune in our life. It could be some Sickness, an accident, could be an encounter for a, with a pious man, pious woman, and could be also a book that we happen to read that can bring this awareness in us. Even this pandemic, I hope and pray that will bring many to repentance and closer 
to God. One of the dangers we face after we become, after we become aware of our spiritual condition is despair. However, our unshakable hope in God's mercy and love protects us. No matter the number of our sins or the severity of our sins, they cannot prevail over God's compassion, love, and mercy. We make the efforts to acknowledge our sins, sincerely confess and repent them. And God gives us the grace of his Holy Spirit, which crowns our efforts with success. If we die without confession and repentance, what happens? We take our sins with us, which will condemn us in front of God. What is truly sincere repentance? Our, one of our Serbian saints, Saint Nikolai Milimirovic, said that repentance is a rebellion against our self. In other words, we need to conquer ourselves. That is the hardest, but the most important victory in our life, to conquer ourselves. It is easy to conquer someone else, but to conquer ourselves is a real challenge. Great Napoleon, at the end of his life, he said, I was able to conquer countries. I was able to conquer czars. I was able to conquer generals. I was able to conquer armies. But I was never able to conquer myself. How do we conquer ourselves? If we do the will of God, instead of doing our own will, we conquer ourselves. When someone hurts us, if we do everything not to retaliate, not to return with an insult, insult, insult but do totally opposite of what the other person did to us, we conquer ourselves. <coughs> because truly, if we don't do that, we wound ourselves. We cause the harm not to the other person, but to us. Because sin is the real wound to our soul and repentance is the only medicine we all need. And it is available to all of us in God's church. We only have to ask for it. It truly cures every spiritual illness in us. No matter how grave, no matter how heavy, and let no one despair because this treatment is affected by the benevolent Lord himself. After we sincerely confess and repent, the Lord says, Behold, you have become well seen no more, as he told paralytic man in today's gospel story. Let us all take this spiritual journey of repentance and confession to prepare for eternal life, which is the only and the main goal of our earthly life. Amen. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters. It's a joy to be with you and pray with you. Let us continue praying for our dear Father Theophanes for his healing and for the safe return of our dear Father Steve. So we will wait to hear from Father Steve about next Sunday. So if Father Theophanes is feeling good, he might be here. If not, I will be back again at 9.30 to say.
You are stuck with me. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no. <clears throat> I really sincerely thank you, and on behalf of my entire community, we cannot thank you enough. First of all, to Father Steve and all of you and the whole family of St. Stephen's for receiving us as your family. We are one family, Orthodox family, and we are beyond words to describe of our gratitude for saving our church and our community by providing and opening your hearts and your home for us too. God bless you all. Please come for the blessing. If there is any visitors, as always, please, when Father Stephen returns, come back and see them. Father Stephen Fanny, see Father Stephen, see them. And uh, also, if you have any questions here today, I'm available after the blessing. God bless you all. Thank you.